Hello, this is Lisa Phillips, and today I'm going to go over source-to-target mappings and interface design documents. They are called the same thing. They've also been called crosswalks, and they're usually Excel documents that has the business requirements and business transformation rules. So you'll have a source and a target. Um, the source is the legacy systems or the system that are currently in place um, on the software um, project, software development project that you're on. And then the target is your to be um, what the business users want to see the data and how they want to see the data transformed to so make it more usable and more efficient for the business to um, to work with. And uh, so here I'm just going to go through the different tabs. This is a, an example template that we used when we were working on financial institution. I like it. Uh, I like all of them, but this one's nice because it has a consolidated view, which has all the table names and all the targets loaded. Um, the to be mapped, if it has been mapped yet, but we know it needs to be from the source. And then it has the different individual tables. So this is financial institution. So it's heavily on um, what kind of institution, what the branch location is, and the lookup data um, will follow that of what you'd see in financial services, derivatives, commodities, securities, um, etc. Lookup data is also called reference data. So if we look at the consolidated view to take you on this little journey. So um, as a developer, we use this heavily and give feedback to the um, business analysts. And then on the front end, um, we've had to create this. So that means we use the data dictionary very, very heavily. And um, did a lot of document interface analysis, which is looking at the current um, documented interface of the um, all the source systems and data. And sometimes the client has that readily available um, in sauce form, or other times you have to go into the database and look at all the different tables and do a printout to look and see what the exact structure is. So this is all at the database level, um, database business transform level, what exactly you want to see. And you heavily rely on the um, the data dictionary and in the comments for the most part you put what exactly the description of this is which really helps as a developer so you know um, what the expected results are with you know uh, based on this so that portion has been done or um, you might be completing that data dictionary with the help of a business user you know printing out what's there and then showcasing that to the subject matter expert to fill in the holes on the exact nature of each of these source fields. So here you have personal account activity, account identification, account holder, and then the columns we're looking at for these three different tables are account closed indicator, which you can see this indicates that the account has been closed, account type code, this identifies if it's a checking, savings, business account, etc. Account ID, um, for this particular instruction, this identifies the identification number of the account owner. And you have the data types, and you also have the conditions of which you will um, grab this data to be put into this particular target. Data can go to many different places. This account ID holder can probably go to four or five different tables. And so you have conditions usually for um, for each one of when you would grab it and when it's appropriate. Maybe you only grab it, you know, maybe if this table is only for um, businesses, then you have to put that condition. If it's personal, then you have to put that condition that it has to be a personal um, account identification. And the types of joins. Um, this is similar to many things we've seen. If the personal account activity, if this field has the value of two and if the value is greater than zero, um, not negative, then the transformation rule is to make it a Y. And that is what you're going to load. And then some others, you have no conditions. You're just pulling it. It just really depends on that particular target and what you want to take in. And the transformation rule is straight mapping. This I've seen on many different projects around many different clients. And um, so, yeah, it just tells you that you're going to take it as is. Um, and uh, when you look over here at the target table, you have the new names are not called personal account activity anymore. They're called personal account target, account target, and account target. So these two tables became one table. Um, you look at the logical name, which, are, which is always nice because it has it basically spelled out. Um, so it's more intuitive for the business user, but then you have the physical columns, which are always shortened because there are limits to how long a column name can be at the database level. So you have to take that into account and be careful. It can't be too uh, long because that costs and times and overhead. And then 
um, nullable yes or no that's standard procedures because that's a big portion of database uh, design and specifications and um, here is interest so in this one we had to do data bottling so we had different forms that we got from different banking institutions and so um, on each form we identified where this particular data came from and this sort of uh, and we match them all up. So you see on this form for the personal account, the account closed indicator, um, you got it from this particular form. If you looked at line 15, line 14, line 15, line 24, E, G, G, and L. And this is just an example, but this is how we did the database um, design. You start with the form and then you break that form off into um, second normal, first normal form, then second normal form, then third normal form. And this just sort of lays it all out so it's very clear where the source of that data gets inputted from that particular form that we use. And we just used um, generic one, two, three, four, five for this particular example. So when you're doing your design specification, this is how you do it. And I'm going to go through, and I like this to be map. This is when you have something from the source that you haven't figured out yet, but you have to go back to, you know, and have a, another meeting on fleshing out exactly what, um, we will or will not use it for. And then say you have an account, you would have the same thing, it would be broken up. So the same information on the consolidated view would be located here if you wanna break it down and just focus. Um, so this is financial institution table, it's called Fin Institution, is the table target table name. Um, and this particular column is the institution type code, which is a variable. Uh, character of two and this code describes this bank is a, is a bank investment bank brokerage money transfer firm etc because there's a lot of different types of lending loaning and banking institutions branch locations a little bit more filled in for you for this example and um, you can see the logical name uh, things get a lot nicer easy to understand and then it gets shortened and these are all straight mappings which I'm not surprised um, and then form data just to keep it consistent of where you find the form data. This isn't filled in for us, but during the mapping, you would go ahead and fill this in um, with the help of all documentation and subject matter experts. And, you know, here is a table of common lookup code, lookup data and reference data that um, uh, banks would be very familiar with. So instrument, product, service type, you know, derivatives. Um, is this product service a commodity? Is it security, stocks, checking, savings, certificate of deposit? So these are different attributes that are common in the financial um, institutions and thus are pretty standard and they don't really change over time. And they're known as reference data because you always need to look this data up because it's going to be standard. You just have to get the code. And he's, these are the codes. And if there's other type of attributes, you would put them there. Um, Put them here so you'll have all different types of attributes name and then you'll just have the list of how um, of their codes and what and the comment usually has their data definitions so uh, let me show you one more this one's called an interface design document but you'll see it's the same kind of thing except shaped a little different and this one i used when we use peoplesoft so it looks a little differently because we have more columns because we have to keep an account um, how peoplesoft is used and it's by component and there's a lot of different um, default values that need to be in there in order for that front end to work so this one gets a little bulkier than the others um, so it's just a good example to see when you're using peoplesoft what the differences will be. So this particular template has revision history because you know that needs to be carefully tracked and updated. So anytime there's revision, it has all the details, the worksheet name, you know, this is worksheet is, you know, which tab was affected, the version and revision date. And then the source to target tables, you know, it would list this um, in one consolidated form. So and then you have filters. Um, this filter is the same as conditions um, or constraints. It is what data will pass. So if the filter or condition is that it needs to be a positive number greater than five, then that's the data that would be pulled and it tells you where to pull it. And the sample one, um, like for instance, um, this one was PeopleSoft. So you have PeopleSoft component name, PeopleSoft table name, 
and parent table name. So PeopleSoft keeps track of parent-child relationships. And so it's on every single interface design specification um, report that you've created. And, and you know, this might look um, a little familiar. It's uh, shaped a little different where the target is written first. And then you have the um, data type. And then you have the length. And then you have the field description. This is the comment where you'd use information gleaned from the data dictionary. If it's a key, if it's required. Uh, the prompt table is pretty big. That is something that will be prompted to the user on the front end of the PeopleSoft component. So we need to know if it's there. Because if it is, it definitely needs a default. And it can't be empty or null. Um, and then you have the source information. And source table, source field name, data type length, um, and then the mapping type code, and then the transformation and logic, and how if it doesn't work out, how you might handle the errors. So this just changes things up. Um, it puts the target information first, source information second, um, and then the transformation rules. But um, like I said, every single project, you have the same exact thing. Um, it's just um, presented a little differently, but the meat and potatoes of it are always there. So when you're writing your design specifications, this is how you do it. This is the concepts behind it, how it works and how you plug and fill this in. And as a developer, many, many times I'm called to do some of the data modeling, some of the requirements gathering and to help create these design specification reports, like for the financial institution, I had to help create this and do the document interface analysis, whereas others, um, it's done for you. And they're the ones who um, will uh, uh, can this to you and you just give feedback if something's not gonna work or if there's missing information or that wasn't found that you need to go back to the, uh, where you gather the requirements to get confirmation. So thank you very much for tuning in. I hope this was very informative over the different types of um, uh, design documents that you will be responsible for creating or maintaining um, as a developer even. It's not just the business analyst. Um, a lot of the times on smaller projects, you are going to be responsible for it. So having a good firm understanding of what exactly needs to go in there, how it needs to go there makes it um, so that you're better able to answer and ask the right questions to the subject matter experts. All right, thank you very much.